Hey everybody, this is Dallas Stone here doing a Let's 3D model episode 87. Um, you know, I'm gonna do my usual here. Uh, I'm gonna thank all the new subscribers. Thank you, Juan Diego Hugo, Jim Knight, Karel Schur, and Roberto Interesta. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Uh, really appreciate uh, everyone's support in the past uh, past month here. So I'm gonna continue doing um, kind of the same style as last. Uh, video where I'm kind of just speeding through um, a one hour of footage and I've <clears throat> times it by four speed just so that you know you guys aren't watching uh, things repetitively for for an hour uh, and this is condensed down into about uh, 15 minutes and a half uh, so I'm gonna be doing similar things as as last uh, video where I'm just creasing and um, adding edge loops in ZBrush and um, something that uh, uh, just a little quick tip here on <clears throat> something that I've noticed is, you know, when I'm using my tablet, um, I usually like using it for um, really fine touches when I'm doing things in Photoshop or when I'm actually sculpting. Um, the, the the past couple days, I've been just using my mouse, you know, uh, for the creasing and the edge loops in ZBrush. I just find that I'm way more accurate with my mouse. So I so for this process um, now I've, I'm doing a lot more of it in uh, with my mouse in ZBrush just because accuracy and speed is very important uh, when you're in this industry and whatever it is that is going to help uh, you do things a little bit quicker and more accurately it's it's worth it. Um, that being said, I mean if you're if you if you're you've been a long time tablet user you might be quicker and more accurate using a tablet so um, you know. Do do it whichever way is comfortable for you. Uh, another thing that I want to bring up is uh, I want to ask you guys, you know, um, how it is that you guys been finding my channel? Uh, you know, is it a certain video? Is it is it a, t a tutorial video? Um, you know, that's brought you guys to my channel and you guys have started to subscribe. Uh, it'd be very nice to know how you guys are finding my channel. Um, all right, so now let's let's go down to more business stuff here. Um, so. You know, um, ever since I found this crease tool and how to use it, and I and I still feel like I don't know how to use the crease tool to its fullest potential as well. I just know how to use it at its bare bones, um, and it's and it's changed my whole workflow. Um, like I've mentioned in my in my last video, um, so I I I hope that people who are using my LT and um, and noticing that there's no crease tools and stuff like that in ZBrush, or sorry, in Maya to transfer over to ZBrush, that they've uh, that they've seen that Maya LT and ZBrush can work together. There's a lot of little things that you have to hack together, uh, but if you're on a budget, it's definitely worth it. And another thing, and, and, and I hate to keep promoting ZBrush, but um, ZBrush has proved to me time and time again that the purchase of this software, you know, it might seem expensive um, initially, but it's definitely proven to be worth every dollar that I've spent on this software. So, um, you know, good job on P Pixelogic. Uh, I'm a huge fan. So, um, and you know, just to kind of put this into perspective for everyone, I mean, I've learned uh, ZBrush beginning of this year, and I haven't really had a chance to to like spend that much time in it. Um, and I'm already feeling a lot more comfortable in the software, uh, spending you know a couple of hours or an hour here and there in this software. And anyone who's been watching my Let's 3D Model videos, uh, you know, I think starting at like episode 60 or 50, um, you're you're, you're going to see the growing pains that I went through uh, with ZBrush. And um, now I'm feeling confident with it and I'm, I'm really enjoying using the software. Uh, so here I'm just kind of using the slide tool, uh, sliding edges there. Um, and like I said, I, I will create a uh, tutorial video on some of the basic tools and stuff like that using the Z modeler in ZBrush, which I found just absolutely fantastic. And I mean, it's not going to replace my 3D modeling software, which is uh, Maya uh, or sorry, Maya LT. It's, it's not going to replace that. Like that's 100%. But, um, 
but if I just need to do quick tweaks and stuff like that in ZBrush, I know that it's possible. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to continue the same to do, to do the same thing here uh, with the the wires on on the engine connecting from you know the spark plugs or uh, into the distributor and just a disclaimer here i am not a mechanic i am not a car mechanic so i don't know if this stuff is is you know if it would even work uh, but i figured it's it was fun in the in the design to add these things to the model and i mean i'm sure lots of car fanatics and stuff like that are going to be like dude this makes no sense this car absolutely would just blow up or something and and you guys are could you guys are probably completely right um so i will admit that i, I didn't go into too much great length to researching um how a hot rod or how a, a real car looks like but i mean this concept is based off of um a fantasy concept from blizzard so uh, hopefully you guys, all the car fanatics can forgive me for the inaccuracies of a fantasy goblin hot rod. So, you know, again, just kind of going through, um, all of these wires and just adding in edge loops, creasing and then dividing. So, uh, sorry, not dividing. Is it dividing? Adding subdivisions, uh, to the model. And you know, I'm I'm really curious to see or to to hear from you guys. You know, how are you guys enjoying this new process, these new videos? Um, like I said, I I promise I will continue to do live uh, videos where the speed is at one. Um, when I feel like I I've hit a different um, part in this process. So after you know after. Uh, after this, after I finish uh, smoothing and doing high subdivisions of all the pieces inside ZBrush, I will be going back and uh, adding details to to this to, to the car. And once that happens, I will be um, I'll probably do you know a couple videos or a video where it's at one speed, and that way you guys can kind of see the process of me uh, kind of detailing all of the different pieces. Um, I mean, I feel like I've already have tons of videos on that, so I might not. It all depends. Um, I might instead wait until I get to the process where I'm like UVing, for example, and I'm UVing the 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 vehicle because I finished all the detailing and I'm ready to bake. You know that, that that's something new, that's something different that you guys haven't seen yet, um, and I think that might be a little bit more uh, hand more useful for you guys so um so yeah so i'm hoping that you guys are are okay with the new process that i'm uh that i'm in that i've, that I've implied to these videos so uh, there i was just uh you know something that i noticed about zbrush is the edge loop tool um when there's a when there's a triangle in maya you know i was able to f i found a kind of shortcut Right by just selecting the the vertice at the very top, and then just extruding it. Uh, in ZBrush, there's not really that kind of hawk or that kind of cheat. I tried to extrude that vertice, it didn't work. Um, but it's really cool how it actually tries and figure out that okay, so this is a a triangle. Uh, I think this is probably going to be a really good example here. Um, and you see how I was having problems there. But eventually, what's going to happen is uh, it will figure it out eventually. Uh, so I, I I just kept trying. And then eventually it it uh, it figured it out. See, uh, I mean that they, it, that happened really quickly, but it actually did work. Um, and uh, now there's an edge loop like right at the very point of the spikes. And so uh, and, and the reason why I'm doing that, the reason why I'm adding all these edge loops, if people are, are wondering, is because when you s divide something in ZBrush, uh, if it's not creased and if it doesn't have another edge loop at the very edge like at the very edge there it's gonna shrink the model so it's really important to add an edge loop so that it keeps its shape right and uh for me i mean i don't once i finish all these uh details and i've put all these uh mo and, I'm, and i'm happy with all with all the details i will be bringing everything back to its cage 
or to its division one. And then I will be re-exporting that out into Maya. And I think that's kind of the process that I that I'm that I'm going to be doing. Uh, just to kind of give you guys kind of a heads up on on the workflow so far. And obviously, if I see that that process doesn't work, if I see that, that process is messy, then I won't do it that way, right? Um, but I think because I'm adding all these edge loops and stuff like that, uh, I almost have to do it that way because the UVs are going to look very very different. Um, and if I don't take the models that I've kind of played around with in ZBrush, um, I don't think the UVs are actually going to work. I think. I'm actually not too sure. Uh, I might have to double check on that. Actually, you know what? No, I think it should work. Because I'm just taking the high poly models, I'm exporting out the high poly models, and then I'm going to be baking it into uh, either X normals or... Uh, so you know what, actually, you know what, that, that, that might actually, sorry, I'm talking to myself here. Um, yeah, that might actually still work. And that's why I don't mind adding all these like extra edge loops and stuff like that in ZBrush because it doesn't affect the poly count that's in Maya. Um, and I think, and that's the process that I've kind of adapted to here. <clears throat> so, uh, right now I, I, I noticed that there was, uh, some errors in the vent. I guess I might have uh, accidentally moved some of them, my vertices and stuff like that. So I'm going back in and I'm re-importing in uh, the vent model. And you know, th this is one of the main reasons why I really enjoy this new process is that in itself, just trying to figure out what was wrong with the vent and stuff like that. That took probably about five minutes. And uh, back then, five minutes of you guys watching me figure out a, a mistake that I made um, if I wanted it to, to bypass that, I would have needed to edit, edit the video, uh, like edit that whole video out, that section of the video out completely. Uh, but now because it's at four times the speed, it only looked like I did that in maximum one minute of, uh, you know, fixing up the vent and re-importing it into, into Maya. Um, so again, I mean, there's still issues with it. And, and you know, I noticed that uh, the vertices weren't merged, and so I had to go back into Maya and um, and fix a bunch of things. And, you know, this, this uh, I mean, I don't want to name any excuses and stuff like that, but this comes down to um, just not the lack of spending the time in Maya and, and, and working on this project has... Uh, I'm starting to feel it. I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel that I'm, I'm slipping. I'm making small mistakes that I normally would, wouldn't have if I was on the ball. Um, so, uh, it just goes to show that I, I need to get back into modeling in Maya a little bit more and working on this process a little bit more. So, yeah, so, uh, so I, I again, I re-import it and I, do all of the the edge loops in there again? Uh, I do the, the crease tool in there again, just to kind of uh, get everything ready to go. I really hope that you guys are okay with this being four times the speed, um, and me kind of just talking over it. I still need to kind of find the timing to when to kind of sign off or. So yeah, so I'm just kind of doing the same thing, um, and then now I'm smoothing it. You guys can see kind of the polys there, and I'm 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 honestly pretty stoked on I'm pretty close to being finished, like ev like putting everything into um, ZBrush and uh, giving it its subdivisions so that I can go in and detail everything. So I'm getting pretty pretty close to that, and I'm and I'm getting pretty stoked on moving on to the detailing process of. Uh, of this project of detailing all the pieces adding in the rust uh, and, and all those things and uh, yeah so I mean there's about one minute left thank you guys so much for watching the video um, and uh, like I said I, I, I want to hear what you guys have to say about you know this new process about the project about um, how I'm doing things uh, like I said this this process, new process really speeds things up for me it allows me to kind of uh, do things a little bit differently, um, focus a little bit more on the modeling, and then just kind of reviewing what I've did for the past for the past uh, few days. Um, 
you know, thank you guys all for the support as usual. And, uh, you know, leave, leave your comments, like the videos, spread the word on my YouTube channel, uh, and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Um, and, uh, you know what, keep working on your art and, uh, hopefully I see you guys again next time. Thank you.